Shalom Ya Sharala. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechaha Kradash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this 100% truth. Double salutations to the Archim out there spreading this word in truth and sincerity and shalom to the few Akwath that are listening in today. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm back at you with another lesson entitled We Are Hated Because We Are Not of This World. All right. The scriptures uh, uh, talk about, you know, if we shall suffer, to suffer for righteousness sake. And, I, and not to suffer as an evildoer And you know That's pretty much the uh, reality For um, For those of us in this truth man We suffer um, Wrongfully Alright we, we have to endure um, um, Slander uh, Hate um, Various lies said about us You know False accusations Scoffing so on and so forth, man. And then on top of that, being in this truth, you're catching hell. You know, uh, um, what does it say in Sirach 2 and 5? For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So we're in that furnace of adversity in which adversity means a difficult or an unpleasant situation. And being in this truth, we are faced with many difficult or unpleasant situations. All right? And on top of all of that, we have um, our own people hating on us. We're hated by the other nations. Even just being an Israelite, we're hated. What more an Israelite in this truth, in this wisdom, knowledge and understanding? All right. But, but that's how it's supposed to be, because ultimately we are not of this world. We are striving for righteousness in a world that functions through wickedness. So we are literally literally going against the grain all right and that's why we're hated man when Yahweh Shai came on the scene he was hated King Herod wanted to kill him okay second Ezra 16 talks about a great multitude is going to come up against the uh against the elect man you know we are going to suffer for the testimony of Yahweh Shai but that's fine because we know what we're suffering for. We're suffering for an incorruptible crown. The first fruits of salvation. To be a part of the elect. To receive immortality. Alright? To be to, 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 to be a part of the righteous government of the Lord. For eternity, man. So we understand why we're suffering. And and, and you know, keeping our eyes on the bigger picture. Is what helps to keep us going in this truth. <clears throat> so lucky. Despite all the hardship that comes along with it. Okay. So without further ado, let's bring out the precepts, man. Let's bring out the precepts. We're going to start in the book of 1 John. This is 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. And it reads, let me just put this window down a bit. It's actually a bit hot. Bear with me a minute. Oh, sun's starting to come out now. All right. <clears throat> This is 1 John 2 and 15, and it reads, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The scriptures say how the prophets love not their lives until the death. We hate it here. You know, some days is easier than others. And you know, uh, the Heavenly Father is all about balance So it's not like we're just consistently catching hell The Lord we will bless us with things every now and again as well 
all right? Because we uh, uh, serve a merciful and just power. But in the grand scheme of things, we hate it here and we love not our lives until the death, man. That's why, when, that's why um, for example, Apostle Paul, he had no problem with, with, with being put to death because he'd actually been to the spirit world, you know, when they stoned him. And, you know, he gave up the spirit, but the Lord put him back in his body. He's seen the beauty of the spirit world. And he, he, couldn't, he, he couldn't even find the words to describe the beauty of the spirit world. It says how, you know, it wouldn't be lawful for him to uh, um, utter the beauty of the spirit world. Meaning he couldn't find the words to describe the beauty of the spirit world. But then when his time actually came for him to die, he had no problem being put to death because he knew that, he understood that being here on earth, under Esau, Edom, this ain't living, man. We're, we're, we're just suffering here. And in the kingdom, I mean, uh, um, in the spirit realm, you, you'd be able to have uh, have that rest. All right. Apostle Paul understood that. So if you love the world, you love how society is right now. The whole alphabet agenda. How now apparently there's more than two genders. This, that and the other. Well, the love of the father is not in you, man. We, we hate this world. Rightfully so. This world is wicked, man. Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked, man. Okay. First John 2 and 15 again. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and everyone's walking in great pride right about now man people have forgotten that there is a heavenly father there is a creator and he oversees everything through the angels people have forgotten that and that's why these these guys are wicked as hell because Ecclesiastes 8 and 11, you know, uh, because sentence against an evil work isn't executed speedily, therefore the hearts of the son of men is fully set in them to do wickedness, roughly paraphrasing. So yeah, oh, I've done this a hundred times. Surely the hundred, the hundred and one time won't, won't hurt. But really and truly, the heavenly father, he, he's um, allowing your wickedness to reach onto the skies and he's going to give come uh you know he's gonna bring down your house to send forth the ultimate judgment man okay first john 2 and 17 and the world passeth away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of the of the most high abideth forever you know we're fighting for that incorruptible crown we're fighting to have that higher position in the kingdom to be numbered amongst the elect, the new righteous government that's going to be set up on earth, man. Beginning with Yahawashai. That's why we endure with um with all long suffering, man. Because we understand the bigger picture. We know that that we have innumerable blessings waiting for us on the other side, man. You know, but but this is not our rest. So there's no point us trying to make our bed in hell, man. When, as, as it says here, in 1 John 2 and 17, that this world passeth away. Esau, Edom's rulership, that's withering away right now as we speak, man. So there's no point trying to, you know, make it here in this society. It's, it's circling the drain. Let's go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15 and verse 18 reads, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So really and truly, it's all spiritual, man. We ain't just suffering for no reason. We're suffering for righteousness sake. 
Okay? But we're not suffering as evil doers. We are suffering for this truth, which is going to work a far more um, um, exceeding glory for us, man. Let me, um, let me get Romans 8 real quick. This is Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed within us. So the glory we're going to receive is going to far compass the suffering that we are enduring right now. And to be honest with you, we need to go through this hell. We need to go through the suffering. Okay. Um, let me get... Uh, damn, where is that? Might be Hebrews 5 and 12. Let me see. No. Uh, bear with me. I think it's in Hebrews 12. Yep, Hebrews 12 and 11. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. And that's true, man. It's a bit like, you know, you go to the gym and um, you're pretty much self-inflicting pain. Okay? Breaking down those muscles so that what? They can come back stronger. Well, that's the same thing with us. We are uh, um, being made into uh, righteous, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're being transformed into being completely righteous. Not having a spot or blemish. Okay? But we're going to have to go through the suffering for that. To be a part of the first fruits. Okay? There was, a, there was another example I was going to give, but it just left my head to lucky. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a bit tired, man. I'm not running. I'm not. Um, I, I didn't manage to get too much sleep. But anyways, that's besides the point. You know, we need to endure the, um, you know, the troubles that come with being in this truth. Knowing that it's going to work out to um, a far exceeding excellency for us, you know? As I always like to say, ain't nothing worth having gonna come easy, man. We're about to inherit the kingdom, the earth, the other nations, other planets, spiritual power, immortality, and the list goes on. Now, you think you're gonna get that just handed on a plate? If we did, well, we wouldn't value it as much. But that's why we had to learn wickedness so that we would know and understand to appreciate righteousness. OK. See, the Heavenly Father's ways is higher than our ways, man. His thoughts in our thoughts. He knows what he's doing, man. So that's why Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding, man. OK. Let's go to uh, the book of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 6. And verse 16. And it reads. And what agreement hath the temple of the Most High with idols? For ye are the temple of the living power. As the Most High said, I will dwell in them. I will walk and walk in them and I will be their power and they shall be my people. So this is another reason why the world hates us because we are not a part of their false philosophies, their false doctrines, um, their deceits. They've been given unto their own lusts and they're taken by it, man. We have the spirit of truth dwelling within us. We have the spirit of Yahweh Shai dwelling within us man and 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 that's a very adverse spirit to this world because Yahweh Shaz you know embodies um, um or represents a righteous spirit 
But we are living in a world that is fueled by wickedness. And that's why we are hated, man. But that's just the conditions of the battle. Okay? Let's read on. Verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So that's why, you know, we have to uh, 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 be separated from the masses, man. Okay? Because we're not of the world. Complete, two completely different parallels, man. You know? We don't see eye to eye uh, 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 with the wicked people of this world, man. Okay? We are against the ways of this world. Right? Verse 18, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And that's a privilege, man. To be um, called the sons and daughters of the Heavenly Father. You know, that's a privilege. But the world has been turned so upside down that people don't see, don't value that. Don't see the power and being in the good graces of the Lord. They'd rather be in the good graces of Satan, man. But that's because this world, this earth is given into the hand of the wicked. People subconsciously understand that if you want to prosper in this society, you have to be wicked. And that's why so much wickedness is going on, man. Because people know this subconsciously. Some consciously as well. Okay. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. This is Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And let, let's um, get the, the uh, definition of persecuted. Persecuted meaning. Now I'm just asking Siri. I hate when it does that man. Usually it will, it will just say it here but... Uh, it's giving me Google searches. Let me try it one more time. What is the definition of persecution? There we go. Hostility and ill treatment, especially on the basis of ethnicity, religion, or sexual orientation or political beliefs. All right? So we are ill treated for this truth. So we are being persecuted, man. And it's only going to get worse. Some of us are going to have to die for this truth, to be honest. All right? And we have to mentally prepare ourselves that, you know, that could be me. This truth, what we're involved in is deadly serious, man. All right? That's why as the elders always say, know what you are involved in. Okay? Verse 11, Matthew 5 and 11, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. You see, we're fighting for that incorruptible crown. We don't want the corruptible crown uh, uh, that you would gain here in Esau Edom's world. All right? For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. So that's a token, really. If you're, if you're suffering wrongfully, if you're uh, uh, being persecuted, being treated in an ill manner because you stand for the, uh, uh, the, the true 100% doctrine of Yahweh Ba Hashem Shai, then, then, you know, you could very well be, be of the elect, man. You see? Because this is what they did uh, uh, to the prophets which were before us. And the prophets are here today. You know, 1 Corinthians 14 uh, says how the spirit of the prophets are subject unto the prophets, man. So the prophets of back then are back here today, man. All right. For example, Esdras. What did he say in 2 Esdras 16? He said, woe is me, woe is me. Who shall deliver me in those days? He was talking about these days now and the days that we're coming into. So what, you're, you're saying that Ezra is what? Uh, 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 what, like a thousand years old or something? No, man. Reincarnation. Okay? We've, we've lived many past lives, man. 
All right. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 3 and verse 8 and it reads, Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. Okay, so yeah, the world hates us, including two thirds of our own people. But the Lord has strengthened us against them, man. And ultimately, you know, Isaiah 54, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, man. So we need not to fear. Because uh, uh, as the scripture says, there is more with us than that be with them. Okay. So we ain't got nothing to worry about, man. All we need to do is trust in Yahweh Ba Hashem Shai. And the Lord is going to throw certain things at us, which we may not be too comfortable with, but ultimately is to, is to, um, to build our faith, to let us know that, yes, indeed, we can trust in the Lord. Because we're heading into a time where we're going to have no other choice but to trust in Yahweh Ba Hashem Shai. So our faith needs to be built and our faith needs to be rooted, man. Because we're heading into a time like never before. And now all those same people that hate us, you know, the two third of the nation of Israel that hate us for bringing out this truth. Well, when that time comes, they're going to wish to see a prophet, man. They're going to they're going to beg for a breakdown. But the Heavenly Father, he's going to close the mouth, the mouths of his prophets, man. Because the Lord will be done speaking is that nope, you had your chance. You made your bed. Now you got to lay in it, man. All right. So keep, so keep, you know, striving for, um, 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 you know, that incorruptible crown. Don't worry about the people of the world that hate you and the slander and whatever. Because, listen, man, when that time comes, they're going to wish they took this truth seriously, man. Isaiah 33 and 6, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of that times, right? Okay. Ezekiel 3 and 9, as an adamant harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And yeah, two thirds of, of our people, they're a rebellious house, man. You've got the Lord, you know, he's got his men going out on the highways and the byways, doing these sit downs, so on and so forth. But our people still don't want to repent. Because they're a rebellious house, man. So what? They're, they're, they're just going to have to to face the wrath. Face the judgment of the Lord. Okay? It is where it is, man. Just be grateful that the Lord woke you up. And Lord willing, he keeps his spirit on us until the very end. So that we can be saved. Okay? Let's go to the book of 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 1. And we'll start at verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. It's not wicked that we want to get our hands on our enemies and even potentially two-thirds uh, uh, of wicked Jake. That's not wicked. Think about all the things we've had to endure. You know, and, and at the end of the day, Esau Edom, he's going to set up to where, um, you know, he's going to... He's gonna, um, um, have the people come after the men of the Lord. Going to set bounties on our heads. You know, the people will probably be rewarded for bringing, uh, um, um, you know, those that fear Yahweh by Hashem Shai for killing them or however it's going to go down, man. So really and truly, f fuck, fuck Jake, man. Fuck two-thirds Jake, to be more specific. And fuck these other nations, man. They're our enemies right now. Okay? Two thirds of our own people, they're our, they're our enemies right now, man. All right. Second Thessalonians 1 and 6 again, seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Yahweh Shai shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Alright, look man, 
Yeah, how a sign the angels are gonna pull up on these people, man. Gonna be like, what's good? Hmm? What's good? All oh, that shit you was talking, huh? Oh yeah, now 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 you wanna seek me? Oh man, that's gonna be a day, man. <laughs> that's gonna be a sight to see. Okay. Verse eight: In flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not the Most High, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yahushai Hamashiach. Okay, because two thirds of our people are going to be destroyed, man. Because we're in the grace period now. What are you doing with it? Are you rehearsing the righteous acts to the best of your ability, or are you uh, uh, in that spirit of do what thou wilt and just sinning willfully? Right? Verse 9 Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power? When he shall come to be glorified in his saints. Okay? That's the elect, man. The Lord is going to be glorified in his saints. He's going to... Look, man. Brothers are going to be raised up with spiritual power. Divine intervention is going to be taking place in these last days. All right? So the Lord, he's coming, he's coming to be glorified in his saints, man. Those same men that you mocked and scoffed and laughed at and disregarded and held them to no regard. Okay, hold them to no importance, right? Verse 10, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our power would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. That the name of our Lord Yahawashai Hamashiach may be glorified in you and ye in him, according to the grace of our power and the Lord Yahawashai Hamashiach. All right? So we are not suffering in vain. Just just hold on, man. Because look, let, let's bring first John 3 and 2 up. Because we know. According to Isaiah 63, Yahweh Shai, he's not coming back to meet these uh, people as a man. He's coming back as an all-conquering force, man. He's coming back as a God filled with power, okay? Great force, high energy, bright, vibrant, angry, okay? And 1 John 3 and 2 says this. Beloved, now are we the sons of the Most High, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. You know, we're still in this mortal flesh. You tell people you're going to be raised up with power, Lord willing. That's the hope, right? And they'll look at you like you've got seven heads. Okay? And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. John 14 talks about um, uh, uh, um, greater acts than these shall you do. We're going to be doing greater acts than what Yahweh Shai has already done, man. That's what Yahweh Shai told us. All right. So. Don't worry about if the world hates you, man. You're getting slander or this, that and the other, man. Because trust me, man, that, that reward is going to be great. If we endure until the end, if we be of the elect, man, <laughs> everything we ever went uh, through, all the hardship we have to endure is all going to finally make sense, man. And most importantly, we're going to value the outcome of going through all the suffering that we're going through. All right. So don't lose sight of the prize, man. The prize is what? The kingdom of heaven. Being delivered from, from the from the pending destruction that's coming down in this place, man. Alright, don't don't lose sight of the bigger picture. Okay. But you know, I've pretty much made the point on uh, on uh, this lesson, man. You know, so hopefully this lesson has been edifying. And until the next time, I say shalom.